That is the point you have to make. You want to do all these rights you've been fighting for in the 60s? All you walking about the streets of America, giving my rights, my civil rights, and some ass on the, on the bound for shoulder. I want to exercise my civil rights. You are right. It's to get you in the mood where putting it in your knee in your hand, that's your right too. Getting your hands is your right too. Don't touch the guy in privacy. He's a right to privacy. You know, barber as you may, but it's a right to privacy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's the whole thing of Benjamin's. Benjamin was a pederast. He was a pederast. That is why things are as they are, <laughs> and not otherwise. Because education is a question of social control. Mankind is socially controlled by his education. The oligarchy made sure it controlled education, curriculum, what you hear, what you see, what you believe, not only what is reality as you see it, but what is proof of reality is even more important. That's what it is. What do you accept as proof of reality? Some of you say, look, my church says so. They were true. My mother says so. They were true. Hmm? I remember reading once, or I remember seeing in a Three Stooges movie, they were just true. <laughs> That's what they could do. And what happens in this thing? Here's a kingdom, knights, earls, dukes. And then you read how this whole situation gets controlled by Edmund. Chaos results. Hmm? Question of Edmund. Um, in the play, he comes on the scene, he's already grown up and he's doing his operation. Um, I had thought of, I mean, who trained him? Did he go, I mean, was well, he see, really the, agent? Yeah, he said, so okay, you know, here, go back to your homeland and do this and that. The play, the play can't deal with the whole life history, right? The play will, will compress the events for you. So you have to know, you came a little late, I was telling him the history of the play before, of the events in the play. The people, the, 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 there's a chronicle of the life of King Lear. Okay? And in the Doomsday Book, incident, Henry and William the First had written all the property, who and what, and who was, who was some and all that. So the people in the audience knew what happened. He was brought up in this way, who his mother was, and how the oligarchy got him in this picture. That's what happened. So you have to assume that, right? Mm -hmm. Before the piece starts, don't expect a perfect narration that Shakespeare was sure when he was born, who his mother was, who trained him, then he came along. He will start at a certain juncture and, and compress events, be a kaleidoscope. And then you have to use your processes of hypothesis formation. But he continues the whole scene. And what I want you to do is to ask yourself in the end. Yeah, things are there, but not otherwise. And see if you don't have Shakespeare's answer. Because in the final line analysis, what happened inconsistent with natural law, inconsistent with how human beings should intervene in the universe on the basis of harmony, inconsistent with order. That is what by all this stuff. That is what I I I I I Follow now? Any questions? I have kept you long. Thank you very much.
One by the woman, Ben Stanley. Yeah. Well, she she is a what I call a pseudo Platonist. You know what the oligarchy does? Do you put on it? They put it like Descartes, you know? They put somebody who seems to be on your side, but they really still are still here. And she would say, I know all Shakespeare's plays are allegory of political input. What is important to a an educated English in the time. And she made comparison to documents and records to prove points. Okay? But when you get down to it, she has the novelisms of Platonism, but on method, as I used to Which is well known recently. And a lot of these producers and directors and stuff that have given follow her. They follow her to get what she said. Othello is a jealous ass. <laughs> There is a mad old fool. No, but the, the, I, I mean, in terms of the parallel between Henry VIII and, and his uh, yeah, one yeah. side and 
So this is Peter Bohr. I know. What they do is, is what I call it a theory of exclusion. Oh. You see, like something, you see, what empiricists do is arrange it. <laughs> arrange it, they suit what they want. Most of the time, they have the conclusion they want beforehand. And they get what they do is suit and they leave the rest out. Hey, I can, I can write a thesis that Henry VIII was a great king. And I can write a thesis he was a bad king. You know? And I'll tell you this, when I was at universities in Britain, those empirical bastards, if you see my papers, you will believe it's me speaking. I was I want to get certified, huh? I mean, degree. So I go to the world, you know, you a great man. Third law, second law, you know. So I want to get certified. Then they found out, and then they nearly killed me, as you know. 